cool. All right, so I am loading up, or I loaded this this up, so it should be showing correctly. Um, now that I don't have the 230 move um, PGN anymore, I think I think chess.com should be completely fine. So all right, so knight f3, knight f6. Um, this is alpha zero stockfish from January of 2018. Um, so c4 e6 knight c3 bishop b4 i think if i have time i'll get back to that game i was showing um before in the QG, qgd but uh all right so bishop b4 queen c2 castles um a3 so a3 was played bishop c3 queen c3 a5 oh come on uh a5 b4 is played now obviously here black wants to play for a4 um b4 is a very peculiar move by um by alpha zero it's very interesting because normally as a human if you were if you were to do it do a um trivia of like uh of like say the top 10 gms top 20 whatever the number is probably i would say 75 to 80 percent would say b3 not b4 just because it's so similar to a lot of um uh cameras out of focus okay i'll turn off sometimes the camera goes out of focus so is that better it's it's still not good is it um okay you guys so all right so anyway whatever um so most humans would say here b3 not b4 so b4 is a very very peculiar uh, very very peculiar move by um alpha zero because normally when, when i see this position what i think of is i think of um i think of there are many lines like this um with like i think b6 a3 takes takes and like normally it goes i think like castles and i think normally white plays b3 with e3 and bishop b2 because you want to put the bishop on the long diagonal here um so i think this is more common um so it's it's surprising that in this game alpha zero decided to play b4 because that doesn't look quite right to me as a human um so here d6 was played now of course this could also mean um um this could this this could also mean that basically um computers understand the structure better than us and maybe in the future in many of these uh quasi nimzo lines without d4 being played you could see humans playing b4 more frequently than b3 one second you guys um all right you guys so okay <laughs> all right okay um <laughs> okay so b4 d6 was played um uh e3 was played yes the, the engine came back so it's like you know it's like uh i'm john connor and the terminators came to came to um they're 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 here to, they're here to get me right for showing this game against um against uh against rib cut so e3 94 was played so here i played queen or not i sorry alpha zero played queen c2 um, knight e4 is an interesting move too i think normally black plays the e5 so knight e4 is a very uh interesting try by um by stockfish to make it a bit different queen c2 knight g5 uh i don't even know what to say this is computer chess i i mean i'm out of a. I i don't i don't even know what to say because i don't think i've ever seen anybody play like this um i mean this is one of these positions where i'm sure like if you showed this to like kasparov since i saw someone say kasparov's name in the chat uh, it'd be like Sparrow's, he'd be like Queen's Two H for like. <laughs> he would give that nice little sniff that Gary does when uh, when he doesn't approve of moves. And um, I mean, I'm pretty sure if I showed this to any human, I'm like, I, I don't don't mention the game. They're gonna be like, ah, it's just some like 1,200 pots are playing Knight E4, Knight G5 because it makes no sense. Um, because Knight G5 is very very weird. I mean, I guess I under I see the merits trying to put the Queen on G5 and hit the pawn on G2. But I mean, no human would play like this. Like, the, what level are they playing at? They're playing at god level, is what they're playing at. Um, but like, no human would ever play like this because we have not been trained to play like this. This is just not how you play as a human. You don't move your knight to e4 and then g5 
in this structure. So um, this is where this is where we could learn from the computers. But again, when I say learn from them, I still it's hard to play like this as a human because it just looks it looks idiotic. Like it just doesn't make sense. Um, So knight g5 is played. Um, so knight g5, and here uh, alpha zero played b5. Um, what's the drink? It's a probiotic. Uh, it's a probiotic, uh, sparkling probiotic drink, tangerine flavor. So knight g5, b5. Again, more weird stuff. Like again, as a human, as a GM, it looks weird to play b4 and then b5. It doesn't look like it's in the spirit. Um, because normally black is going knight d7, knight, knight c6, or knight a6 here. Um, so here knight f3 was played, gf3. And already it's starting to look very suspect for black because you've got bishop b2 and castles, rook g1. The queen side is closed, so the queen king will be very safe on b1. And there are going to be tons of threats on both of these uh, diagonals here as well. So this is already starting to look very good for white. It is not kombucha. Um, so queen f6, d4. Um, Rook Crusher comes up with a comment of the comment of the day so far. He says, um, Knight G5 is a sort of creative move that an 1800 might come up with after 50 minutes of thought, but for completely the wrong reasons. That's pretty much, that's, that's, that's dead spot on the money. That's exactly what I would think. If you didn't tell me who was playing this game as, um, as white or black, I'd be like, oh, but black is just some, some total pots or, um, so D4, Queen F3, Rook G1 was played. I don't know, d4 looks weird to me as a human. I would assume bishop b2. Maybe it was worried about e5, maybe, or queen f3 followed by e5. Um, I'm not sure. Um, uh, you guys in the chat, is um, is chess.com lagging, or is it just me? Is it just me, or is, is chess.com lagging? It seems like it's lagging very slightly. Uh, it, it, is it just me or is, is chess.com actually lagging? Um, it felt like it, it was, the E5 didn't play. Yeah, e, E5 didn't. Yeah, chess.com is lagging. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. Um, it looked like it was hanging there for a bit. So, okay, so D4 looks a little bit weird. I mean, I guess the point is bishop B2 takes takes rook G1, maybe E5, and now you close the diag. Um, so, takes D4, takes rook G1. Um, I thought it was a stream, but I guess it's chess.com. It's not my stream, actually, so I was looking. I have no dropped frames, so it's not, it's not on my end. It's not on my end. Um, so, knight d7, bishop e2, queen f6, bishop b2, very logical. I guess the point is now of e5, you can just take and maybe play f4 as well. Yeah, it's more like a frame lag. Frame lag would be right, except I have zero dropped frames, so, um... I think it's a chess.com issue, not on my end. Um, <coughs> so bishop b2, queen h4, alpha zero plays rook g4. Again, very in the spirit of the position. So I think the idea is you just want a castle. You don't care about any of these pawns. Again, you see black's pieces are very underdeveloped. Bad knight on d7. Um, and white's just going to get tons of threats everywhere here again. So queen h2. Rook G3, I mean, I don't know what to say about Rook G3. I'm a human, so I don't understand. Um, must be the huge PGN that's causing the problem. Very, very likely, actually. Um, so Rook G3, F5, castles. Rook F7, um, I guess support the pawn. Maybe try to develop the knight to F6 or F8. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Um, I'm not sure I understand it completely, but... So, okay, so rook f7, bishop f3, um, I guess threatens rook h1, hitting the queen on h2. Um, queen h4, rook h1 is played, queen f6. And now king v1, okay, just sidestep, I guess. King v1 is a very human move. And one thing I will say about um, uh, alpha zero is it does play a lot of moves that make a lot of sense to me as a human. 
um, where like King B1 is, is, a, is a very human-esque move that I would not expect a computer to play. Um, so it's nice to see Alpha Zero does play some of these 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 uh, these very interesting human-like moves, which prior to Alpha Zero I felt like you weren't really seeing that much of. Um, which is a testament to how far we've pushed chess as humans that we've uh, the computers sometimes play moves that we like as well. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Roger says, "Will I be in Los Angeles in the near future? Uh, I won't be." Unless I'm in SoCal to see my grandmother, I probably won't be in SoCal for a while yet. But um, it's always possible, and I'll definitely let you guys in chat know if I'm in uh, if I'm in SoCal anytime soon. So, um, <laughs> Rainbow Cats says, "Imagine being a human 2019." So King B1 G6, Rook G G1. I mean, not a move I would play. Not a move that I understand as a human in this position. You are down two pawns. You better attack and prove that you have something. So rook h3 is what I'd play as a human to hit the pawn on h7. Um, uh, that, that's what I would play as a human. Um, but rook g1 is just kind of a weird move. I mean, I don't really understand the point behind rook g1. Uh, Cooling Hero actually asks, says, am I going to play in Stavanger in the summer? Um... I will not be playing in Norway just in the summer, but I did set a goal that if I got over 2,500 subs in the month of April, I would do live commentary of Norway chess. So even though I'm not playing, um, we did get we did go over 2,500 subs yesterday. Yesterday was a very epic stream uh, playing Twitch Rivals. I think we I think we got close to 2,800 subs if I remember correctly. So I will be doing or no 2,700. Sorry. So I will be doing um, I will be doing live coverage, but I will not be playing in Norway chess. So Rook G1, can I try to go deep into some of these moves that make no sense to me? I mean, I can't really, because like, okay, so this is the point. So let me just delete some of this commentary. Um, see if this, this helps. Uh, let me see if deleting some of this commentary makes makes it makes the PGN a little bit less laggy. Um, one second. I'm just deleting some of the some of the additional notes in this file. So one second. So, okay, I'm sorry, you guys. I know I'm going back a little bit. I'm just trying to delete some of the commentary to um, keep this more open. See if I can, uh, the PGM might be a little bit too heavy. So, okay, so, okay, so, all right. So you guys were asking why Rook GG won. Um, when is Hikaru's commentary, the event I just mentioned? It will be, um, it will be, I believe, June 3rd to 15th-ish around there. Um, so, okay, so, so you guys want so someone asked why rook g1 try to analyze it okay so as a human here i'm looking at the position i'm like well black can't play e5 or c6 so ideally black would like to open up somehow this bishop is really bad you want to try and develop it somehow um not really clear which way but you want to develop the bishop um gary 985 says this white a position that justifies being down two pawns um, as a computer, yes. As a human, if, I, if, this, if this was a rated game, I would say no, because it looks speculative. You don't have a way to break through right away. You don't want to go d5. d5 tries to open the diagonal, but then black plays e5. Like, d5, e5 just kills everything. Um, maybe you can get some bishop e2 and f4, like, something like this, but it's very iffy, because the rook on f7 can just go to g7, and it's going to protect everything. You're not really hitting the pawn on f5 either, and black can always play knight c5 and just bishop d7 and rook f8. Um, so d5 doesn't look doesn't really make much sense here. Um, if you don't play d5, like I'm, I'm not sure what else you can do. Um, <laughs> uh, it, like you can maybe try c5, but the problem with c5 if you go c5 is on black and play d5. Um, and now not only now you now this diagonal is close, so you can't push, but also this diagonal. Or this diagonal is close as well so on um, uh so it's it's not really clear and i would say as a human objectively i feel like white should have enough but it's very hard and i'm presuming rook gg won the idea is at some point there's some extra idea with f4 but again i don't like the rooks on h1 g1 it would seem to me the rook is better on h3 to try and long-term attack h7 because here even with the rook on g1 there are no actual threats and I don't understand Rook G1. Rook G1 is one of these mystical, you know, voodoo moves that a computer plays. 
And as a human, it's just like, well, okay, I have no idea what that's what the purpose is. Um, no, I'm sure there is a purpose, but it's just like, as a human, I can't explain it, and I don't think I ever will be able to. Um, like, I would even Rook G2 actually makes more sense to shift to H2 because here it feels like all the threats as a human are, should be on the H file, not the G file. Um, so Rook G1, A4. Um, but yeah, but the point with the computer is the computer Alpha Zero is probably looking at something like 20 moves down the road. Like, maybe it sees some idea of Rook C1 and C5, CD6, and like. I mean, something with the rook c1, because, like, obviously, you're going to open the c file and use the c file for the rook. I mean, but that's just too deep. As a human, I mean, I could never play a move like rook gg1. It's just, it's a ridiculous move. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the idea is you want to go with c5 and rook c1. Something something that's way too deep for me as a human to ever understand or comprehend in any, any, um, any, any manner. So a4, king a1, uh, rook g7. Now e4 is played here. Um, but yeah, it's like, again, it's one of these positions as a human. If I was going to move the rook, I'd probably go to g2 if anything, just to keep rook h2. Because like you figure the attack has to be on the h file. So why do you put the rook on g1? I mean, are you really going rook c1? There's nothing on either the d or the e file. So why do you put the rook on g1? It just doesn't make any sense as a human. Um, but I, I mean, it's obviously a good move, but I just, I can't explain why it's a good move. Um, so a4... Uh, King a1, rook g7, e4, f4. I mean, but again, so here's an, here's another question though. So like, I get that here on e4, f4, with the rook on g3, the rook's attacked. But again, why is the rook better on g1 than g2? Like, I mean, it's 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 like incomprehensible almost. But I guess the point is now somehow after f4, e4, you're gonna open up the d or the c file. But it's just it's it's crazy. This is just crazy stuff. So c5, queen e7 um rook c1 oh wow look obviously obviously it went rook g1 so it could play rook c1 but like i mean i mean as a human it's just like it's way too deep just way too deep i mean yeah okay also now the now now the bishop is g2 right so on g5 g4 or something you get bishop g2 like i mean this is just ridiculous um this is not chess so knight f6 e5 takes takes or no takes rook e1 Again, another move I don't understand. I would assume you want to take on e5 because now the knight has to go to d5. And then you can take and maybe play e6 and open up the diagonal. Um, after takes, you go e6 maybe. Um, I guess, yeah, when I keep going through these, uh, through the games, I'm actually just going to do it manually. I'm not going to load the PGN because it seems that the PGN might be causing issues. So Rook H one was played. Um, so e4 okay again like it's crazy now black is up what like three pawns here he goes e4 bishop takes e4 but the one thing white has here is now the e file is weak um maybe there's still threats here against b7 and e6 um but like i just i mean this is just this is too deep for me as a human to understand you'll notice like the rooks also the rooks were over here trying to attack and now somehow the rooks are over here like this is just bizarro chess that makes literally no sense um so queen f8 is played now d5 which is a uh, very that's a human move just trying to blast the structure um i mean i love how ikari says he can't comprehend why but he actually does sort of predict the reason yeah but i mean it's like i can guess the reason but as a human it just looks so stupid because like as a human you can't calculate this so like as a human if we go back um so like in this position I'm down two pawns. I want to attack, man. I want to attack. I want to mate him on the H file or G file. Like, you know, bring the pieces over. Just kill him. You know, like Maurice would say, just like, just attack. Just, just win. You know, bring it, bring in all the pieces and just finish him. Um, but again, Alpha Zero is incredible. It doesn't even do anything remotely like that. It's like, well, two pawns. I'm down two pawns, but I guess Black can't push the pawns. So I'm going to play for long term stuff with like Rook C1, C5, maybe E4. Um, and, uh, it's just very, uh, very unusual, very, very unusual concepts. Um, knight f6, e5 takes rook e1, e4 takes, queen f8, d5. So ed5, bishop d3. So now white is down what? Is white still down three pawns? Yeah, white's down, white's down three pawns here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so white is down three pawns here. 
But you'll notice you control the e-file, but much more importantly, you've got this long diag here that's completely open. Um, um, so bishop g4, try to develop the rook, I guess, so f3. I mean, it's nuts. It's just like offer every pawn on the board almost here. Just like, it's like Alpha Zero wants to sack, um, sack five pieces. Uh, but in this position, there's definitely compensation. I, I mean, in this one, even as a human, it's very clear there's there's serious comp with the open diagonal here. Um, so Bishop D7, Queen C3, hitting the Knight, obviously, very logical. Knight H5, Rook E5, hit the pawn on D5, maybe take on H5 to create threats against the Rook on G7. And now C6 to support the pawn chain. No C6 either. Now the pawn on C5 is fixed, so White's either going to mate on, on the G file or probably just lose if you take take then the B file opens for rook b8 b3 to hit everything here so um so white plays rook ce1 knight f6 queen d4 um interesting move again it's sort of a waiting move that I don't really understand um uh, would, would I like this position on the board being down three pawns uh I mean, this position, I think I wouldn't mind because it's pretty clear cut in terms of what you're trying to do with the open file. But I would, I mean, I would hate the position after G6. After G6, I would hate the position for sure. Uh, even as white, I would not enjoy it. So, um, so queen D4, I don't understand. And sure enough, Stockfish grabs a fourth pawn. So now you have Stockfish up four pawns. So this is very amusing. Black is up four pawns and he's probably losing in the position. So, um, so Bishop... Oh, or not bishop buff one sorry bishop b1 okay so bishop b1 and now bishop thank you uh the fp stir for subscribing with twitch prime now bishop b1 is a very nice little idea here so you notice you're, you're putting like everything here on the king right around the king and so you've got like amazing bishops on a2 and b2 and you've got amazing rooks on e5, e1, and queen on d4. And black can't really break through. If b4, you take a3, just play bishop c3. So black doesn't really have a breakthrough. So even though you're down four pawns, these bishops are are, are, are uh, monstrous on a2 and b2. And everything is positioned almost perfectly for white here. So bishop c6, logical move, rook e6, rook f7. And now stockfish, or not stockfish, um, alpha zero plays the amazing rook g1. So in this position, Stockfish basically has, has admitted that it's made a mistake and it's willing to give up a piece and say, okay, I'm probably worse after rook f7 takes, 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 takes. Um, but I'm, I'm slightly worse, but I still do have four bigly pawns here in the position for the, uh, for the bishop. So I've got four pawns for the bishop in this position. So it's, it's not quite that simple. Um, but alpha zero does not actually grab the pawn. Instead, it plays rook g1. So rook g1 is played here. Now Stockfish plays queen g7. Again, alpha zero, I think, figures it can always take the knight whenever, but it takes the pawn at f4, plays rook e8. Um, Radagasus was alpha zero team behind Fabian in the match against Carlson. Uh, no, not as far as I know. I know there were some people with Leech, or not Leech, sorry, with um, with Leela who were who I think were helping him, but there was no one with, um, there was no one, uh, there was no help from alpha zero as far as I know. So, all right, so let's see. So queen f4, rook e8. So rook d6 is what um, what alpha zero played. Another amazing move. And now um, in this position, uh, and now in this position, I mean, rook d6 is an amazing move, because again, it's like black and play knight e4, knight h5. There are all kinds of discoveries against the queen on f4. Um, so it's kind of amazing, actually, um, what's going on here. So, um, so rook d6, knight d7. I guess knight e4 doesn't work. If knight e4, maybe just queen c1. Um, So, um, okay. 
One second, you guys just need to do one quick thing. Um, so you right, so rook d6, knight d7 is played. Um, Okay, sorry about that, you guys. Sorry, I just had to find the PGN. Thank you, CG4. Okay, for subscribing with Twitch Prime. Okay, so right. So anyway, um, right. So Rook D6, Knight D7 was played. Now uh, Alpha Zero played Queen C1. Putting the Queen, you'll notice there's still a lot of symmetry here. Very open diagonal. Both diagonals are open. All kinds of threats. Maybe Queen C3 and Queen H8 made as well. Um, so here, Stockfish plays Rook F6. And now Alpha Zero plays another incredible move here. Um, Alpha Zero plays F4. Wow. What a move. I mean, as a human here, you really want to take somehow, but like to play F4 and just throw more, 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 uh, more, um, what's it? Throwing more, um, more oil on the fire, I guess. Or it's just like F4 is an incredible move. It's not oil. I forgot what the word is. You throw something that on the fire. Is it throwing more wood on the fire? No, throwing more gas on the fire. That's what it is. Throwing more gas. Throwing more gas on the fire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's more gas, right? A adding fuel to the fire. Yes, adding more fuel to the fire. It's fuel, yeah. Fuel, gas, it's all the same stuff. Um, But yeah, F4, F5 is incredible. So Queen E7. Now Alpha Zero, again, refuses to give up this bishop. Like, that's as a human, you'd probably take and be like, okay, I can play F5 or I can play like... Queen b2, and there's going to be some trick here with rook g6, and it's completely winning for white. Um, <laughs> TNT, yeah. Um, I think it's <laughs> I think it's throwing more gas in the fire, if I remember correct, if I remember the phrase correctly. Petroleum, yes. But bishop f6 is what, I think if you ask it to survey of like the top 10 GMs, most of them would say you take, they'd say like, okay, I've got like queen b2, and I'm, I mean, f5, fg6, rook, I mean, this has to be winning for white, surely. Um, even though you give it up four pawns. Um, so to then play... Uh, so to then play rook f6 and just value this bishop. Like here, don't forget, white is still down like 500 pawns. White is still down three pawns here. But basically, white is saying this bishop is the most valuable piece on the board. And having access to this open diagonal, this one lone diagonal for this bishop is worth more than almost anything else here by, by far. Which is just incredible. So here, um, Alpha Zero plays F5, which is incredible. I mean, just amazing. Like, it's it's just incredible to play like this, to keep this bishop on this diagonal forever. Despite being down all these pawns, the motive of the game is this one diagonal is all that matters at the, in the, at the end of the day. So Queen E3 is played here. So FG6. So, um, so yeah, so queen e3, fg6 is just incredible. Um, uh, now queen takes c1, and now g takes h7. So now you'll notice white is gaining back material, black's only up a pawn. you still got two bishops. Thank you, Hoobie Juby, for the three-month resub. So you still got three pawns on the board. This pawn on h7 is extremely strong here as well. Um, king f7, white takes with the rook. Again, well, I guess no, rook c1 actually does make sense. Bishop c1. Looks a little bit weird. You want to keep this access square point on h8 available. So knight h7 was played. Bishop takes h7. Rook e3. Rook d1. And now, now that the smoke is cleared, black still has uh, two pawns and a very solid bishop on c6 that, that um, pretty much protects all the pawns. But bl white has this dark square bishop that is going to decide the game eventually. So king e8 was played. King a2. Bishop d7. Alpha Zero played Bishop D4. I think Bishop G8 is probably good enough as well. But um, Bishop D4, Rook H3, Bishop C2. So I guess White just wants to go like King B1, King B2, King C3. Bishop E6, Rook E1, King D7, King B2, Rook F3. Um, Rook E3. I guess next couple of moves don't really need explanation. Um, so now he checks. The idea is White wants to go Bishop D3 and Rook B2. So Rook F2 is a nice little, nice little nifty move. To go bishop d3 and then rook b2 to hit the pawn on b5 twice. So rook g3, king b4, rook g4, rook d2, bishop d7. And now white brings the king in here. So even though you get the bishop here, 
this king is always going to be eyeing everything on um on on all these squares so king a5 rook f4 so king b6 rook f3 So, okay, so rook f3, rook f3, rook d3 was played, rook f2, and now bishop to d1, bishop c6, so bishop c6, now king b6 was played by, um, by alpha 0, bringing the king to b6, again, you want to put pressure on all these pawns, um, on these these four pawns like bishop f3 and bishop d5 um and so after king b6 king f7 is played and now i think bishop g4 is played idea to play bishop g8 or bishop c8 sorry um rook f1 bishop c8 so rook f1 bishop c8 or no sorry no this didn't happen sorry king b6 is the end of the game uh this is just analysis at the end of the pgn um but after king b6 uh seems like stockfish resigned here basically the point is white wants to go bishop g4 bishop c8 collect the pawn of b7 you trade everything and then you run the c pawn all the way down to c8 here and it's completely winning uh for white so that's why in this position um black resigned here or stockfish resigned because white's going to bring the bishop to c8 and uh, it's just really really incredible to be able to um to play like this uh really the moral of this of this game is pretty much all about the uh dark square bishop this dark square bishop was was uh just an incredible piece like from start to finish this bishop was so important and um what this game i think really highlights more than anything is that you play you can play for the long-term initiative in a way that you can't that most humans would never even consider so like even back here like in the, at this point it already makes a lot of sense but getting to this position where you have this open diagonal um relative to this position relative to this position to to be able to create this pawn break with e4 and c5 and open this bishop and understand that eventually you can bring this bishop all the way back and use both these diagonals and actually not even you don't even use these as i recall i think it's like rook c1 rook e1 you use the open e file and the open d file eventually it's just extremely deep it's really really deep concepts that um that uh that i don't think any human could could find it's just it's incredible absolutely incredible game so um For her. I wanted it so bad and he did it. Now take the room! Now take the room! <laughs> what a move!